हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल सी एस एन आई टी ट्यूटोरियल वायवरेशाली इन अवर प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस इन सिंपल वे रीडर राइटर प्रॉब्लम एंड प्रोड्यूसर कंज्यूमर प्रॉब्लम विथ एग्जाम्पल्स आई हैव अटैच अ कंप्लीट ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम प्ले लिस्ट लिंक इन बिलो डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स दिस ऑल टॉपिक्स विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर यूर एंड सेम एग्जाम और एनी अदर एंट्रेंस एग्जाम पर्पज लाइक गेट और नेट सेट एग्जाम नाउ In today's session, we will discuss our next topic, that is inter-process communication. Let's start the session. So, in our channel, we have already discussed all this playlist in detail explanation, practical demonstration, and important question bank. Please subscribe my channel and also share it with your friends. Now, in today's session, we will discuss first about inter-process communication. then ipc mechanism like shared memory message passing pipe then difference between unnamed pipe name pipe and at the end we will discuss some important question bank the first question is what exactly inter process communication as we discussed earlier in operating system there are multiple process and this process communicate with each other and also shared information with each other this all task have perform accurately and efficiently due to inter process communication mechanism this mechanism helps operating system to perform any task fastly and also they improve the system performance in our operating system we can perform multiple task parallelly right again this inter process communication mechanism used for that they helps to perform multiple task parallelly at the same time without conflicting each other basically they making your system more convenient and reliable to use so this is a work of inter process communication now what are the different ipc mechanism so there are total three types of main ipc mechanism first one is a shared memory second one is a message passing and third one is a pipe as per your exam point of view this is one of the most important question now let discuss all this mechanism in simple way so let's understand shared memory in simple way see here in this particular diagram shared memory has total three components process a process b and kernel now the work of operating system kernel is to allocate a particular memory to these processes for performing the operation now operating system allocate same shared memory two process a and process b in this shared memory process a and b perform different read and write operations now let's assume that process a write some data in this shared memory and after that process b read the same data from this shared memory means they perform all the operations on the same memory region so here operating system used different semaphore or mutex algorithm for while sharing information there will be no any conflict is occur or they prevent the data from the corruption or the race condition so for that purpose they use semaphore and mutex algorithm so this is the concept of shared memory now again understand with the example assume that process a is the producer and process b is the consumer we already discuss producer and consumer concept in our previous session i have attached link of that video in below description box now assume that process a is the producer they produce the temperature data for example 25 degree celsius or 26 degree celsius now process b is the consumer consumer read this data and display on dashboard so for that purpose they use the same shared memory so kernel just allocate the memory after that kernel didn't interfere with each other so this is a concept of shared memory the second ipc mechanism is message passing or queue see here in this particular diagram there are total four components in message passing process a process b queue and kernel in our last mechanism we have discussed kernel allocates the shared memory between the processes right but here kernel maintain the message queue they maintain the communication between process a and process b by using the queue data structure 
Now see here. Let's assume that process A is the sender and process B is the receiver. Now this process A want to send a message to the process B by using that particular queue. So the first step is process A send message to the process B via queue. So when process A send a message, this message goes to this particular queue. So for message sending purpose, they use message send this system call in C programming. Now this message is placed in this particular queue. So this queue is managed by the kernel and kernel stored all this message in first in first out format. Now process B want to read this message. So process B perform message receive this system call function and they receive this message through this particular queue. So basically kernel ensure safe and synchronize communication between process A and process B. Now let's understand with the example. Assume that process A is the sensor data producer. They send a message to the process B via Q that is temperature is equal to 28 degree Celsius. So kernel maintain this message. They manage this particular Q. Now process B retrieve this message and display this particular message on the dashboard. And after retrieving message, your queue become empty. So this is called as message passing. They maintain the efficient communication between the processes. The third IPC mechanism is pipe. So pipe has there are total four components. Process 1, process 2, write function and read function. This pipe IPC mechanism is work like a one way communication between process 1 to process 2. See here, there is a data is flow from one process to another process. They didn't shared memory with each other. Kernel manage this pipe, kernel manage this undirectional communication. That's why this pipe IPC mechanism used only for small scale communication. Now let's understand the working of this. Suppose process 1 to send message to the process 2 by using pipe IPC mechanism. Now here operating system first create the pipe or buffer between process 1 to process 2. For that purpose they use the system called pipe P. So P just work like an array of two integers. Now assume that process 1 is the sender and process 2 is receiver. Process 1 send particular data to the process 2. So for that purpose they use the write function for sending data or updating the data. Now process 2 is work like a receiver. They receive those data means they read data. So for that purpose they use the read function in operating system. Now here kernel manage this complete one way communication and kernel manage this particular buffer which is also called as parent child communication. That's why we are using the fork function to maintain process 1 and process 2 communication by using the pipe buffer. Now they have total two types named pipe and unnamed pipe. Let's discuss further. Now let's understand the difference between named pipe versus unnamed pipe. This is one of the most important question for your exam point of view. See here. Unnamed pipe is a temporary communication channel. When your process are in running status, at that time only this particular pipe have created for sharing the information between the process. On the opposite of that, there is a name pipe. So name pipe is a permanent pipe. They permanently present between the file system to sharing the information. So this exists in file system until operating system deleted manually. Next point is unnamed pipe works only for between the related process but a name pipe is works between related process as well as independent process. Unnamed pipe they don't have a particular name. That's why we are using the process descriptor. So operating system indicate that P of 0 is perform the read operation and P of 1 means write operation that we have discussed on the previous slide. In name pipe they have a particular path in file system because they permanently present in file system. 
path like a temporary my fifo in this way now the next difference is a name pipe is created by using the pipe system call and name pipe is created by using the mk fifo this particular system call or command unnamed pipe there is a data flow only in one directional which is called undirectional data flow name pipe perform the data or exchange the information in bidirectional way like process 1 send information to process 2 then process 2 again send information to process 1 in this way unnamed pipe is exist only in memory but a name pipe is exist in file as in directory or in a complete file system so you have to prepare this difference completely now as per your previous year question paper they have asked the question like describe brief different ipc mechanism so here you have to explain shared memory message queue and pipe these three ipc mechanism in detail with small examples and also it is necessary to draw the diagram for six marks next question is same and list different IPC techniques. Same answer is there. And difference between name pipe and unnamed pipe with suitable example for 6 marks. So you have to compulsory prepare these questions. So this is all about. Thank you. Keep learning.